Hello, everyone. Okay. Just so you know, I want to thank you all for getting me to around 800 subscribers. I want to thank you all. Very thankful. Can't wait until we get to reach 1,000, hopefully by the end of the month, which is my goal. And by the looks of it, we actually have a good chance. Other than that, thank you. Now, video time. Now, in this one, Izu is going to be a female, so her... Now, we will refer to her as Izumi, not Izuku. The female version of Izuku is Izumi. Japanese talk. Okay? Two. Inko is going to, well, give Izuku, or Izumi, away to the military. Now, well, yeah. So, um, Katsuki will know Izumi for about five years, and he will bully her. But after that, she will, like, disappear. Um, what else? And the ship will be a other female. And, um, yeah. And the ship person will be aged down, so... It can give you around a... You can guess who it is. So, yeah. And, yeah. We do skip to Izumi at the age... Or being born now. Izumi is grown up. She's, like, nothing changed in how she was born like any other baby, grows up to a young girl. Now, this the picture you see on this, well, on this, um, on your screen will be when her she's around 18 to 20. But, yeah. Now, Izumi, or young Izumi would have, well, wanted to become a hero, all, and still having that whole thing with how Izuku did with All Might, just she's female, so, yeah. And she would go to the age of, well, growing up and, well, hitch at four years old. Her obviously going to the court doctor and still getting the news of, well, I'm sorry, Miss Midoriya, your daughter's quirkless. And Miss Midoriya would have said, or Inko would have always said, but he's just being polite, so Inko would have said, wait, is there anything you can do, my... And him stating no, and points out the whole bone. In, well, her pinky toe. Because whenever you have a double jointed, it's, well, yeah. And, well, Inko. And I had to think, damn it, I wanted so much, I wanted money. Damn it, Hosashi she only gives me barely any money. And, yeah. Now, Hosashi is actually abroad. Hosashi is um, still abroad in America. And he has no idea, um, well, what... Or he knows what his daughter looks like as well, Inko just can pictures once every year, so yeah. And well, In Izumi would have gone home with their mother. Now, when they got home, yeah, Izumi next passing year, let's just say it wasn't pleasant. Mbakugo would hurt her, her mother would beat her with either some sort of weapon, not a blunt object. But yeah. She, but she was never hit on the face, so, yeah. And Izumi always trying to smile for All Might, or just like All Might, and, well, that only became it. It only became worse up to that, and, well, Inko got the bright idea of getting her daughter away and having another one with Hisashi. And, well, the another daughter, or the another kid, does not work out. Inko, she's not, Izuku's not getting a younger brother. I'm just saying that now, but I'll just say Inko couldn't have, or no. Inko tried to get another kid, but like, Izaj was like, no, I'm, I'm grieving for her. To, what, do you want to replace our daughter? Yeah. She got dicked, blocked, to be a little, to be in the nicer form. Now, well, where did Izumi go? Now, she was given to a, a experimental military branch that does illegal things. So what I mean by illegal, I mean if anyone if anyone found out, court martial, court martial. Almost everyone of the higher ups in that organization would have been court martialed, except for the experiments because those are actual people. And now this experimental area would be like how hot, like Doctor Halsey, did to the Gen One. Well. Spartans experimenting on their body, making them super soldiers, and Izumi, less being well, having a life before this was not 
happy to be, well, made into a killer. And she has tried to escape several times, but when she is, well, technically, as they would call her, she graduated graduated governmental school, or the old military school that they put her through, she had a bomb in her neck, kind of like how Suicide Squad would have it. So if they ever did try to leave or do anything that wasn't what they wanted, let's just say something will go kaboom and Izumi won't have any head. And her body would basically fall to the ground. So, yeah. And Izumi would have, well, listened for several years all the way up until the age of 16. Now, Izumi actually is, well, whenever she always makes sure she stays one day later, to as opposed as she says to the government or to the old branch of the government to make sure there's no loose ends and the government well wanting to make sure there's no loose ends allow her to do this now she sometimes she'll do this sometimes she will not and or she, she always does it but whenever she well does it she takes pieces of technology and well yeah and now Izumi would have, well, would have, well, hmm, made a EMP, a small EMP, but yeah, a EMP nonetheless, and this is not one of those EMPs that will just more or less turn something off for a short time, no, it will completely shut it off, making so you would have to look at a piece of technology, the entire phone would need power, and then you would have to reprogram it all over again. Yeah, you have to set it up right back to the beginning. Every single piece of data, gone. Which would lead her, the bomb, to be very, too well, all she would after, afterwards need, just need a surgeon to poke it out of her, or take it out of her, basically. And when she does hit 16, eh, no, that's too young, 17, yeah, that sounds better. She is, well... On a mission that, well, in the middle of it, she, let's just say, turns her beacon off. Or, they think she turned her beacon off, but really, well, she broke it. And they repeat to tell her that, well, put your beacon back on. Her simply stating that there is a, well, in a, faking a static voice saying, <laughs> no, not statically voice, but like, she would, there actually be a kind of, she would have set this all up. Like, this whole assassination mission, oh, she set this up. Yeah, she's smart. She's smart girl in this. To more or less jam the comms so it actually sounds staticky. And she says that it's static, losing communications. And they, well, hear several more gunshots with the camera being buzzing in and out, but whenever they see her, she's shooting at people, and they would supposedly die, but Izumi is shooting for non-lethal spots, but making it look like they're dead, and yeah, a big assassination, a big assassination mission, no people died in it, and yeah, now, well, Izumi would have, well, got into the hostage, the hostage proceeding to point a gun at her. Izumi, well, let's just say, shoots him, but, well, it looks like in the heart, but he has a, well, more durable. It looks like he got shot in the heart, but really he didn't. He had plating on his chest, but it made it look like he got shot in the heart. And, well, yeah. And,. Before that, she just says goodbye, come off, and turns her camera off. With the voice comes before saying that, saying, we will kill you, blow her, and Izumi is still hearing all this, seeing she just muted her kind of like a mic, so they can't hear what she's saying, and well, she goes over to the guy and picks him up, him saying something, and they think Izumi is saying something also. She is, she's just, they can't hear her. And those saying they'll blow up. Her proceeding to have a symbol of an EMP on a device. Her clicking it and her suit starts to, 
or the bomb deactivates completely. And that whole area was abandoned when they got the old military got there. And let's just say they left lots of loose ends, and that government official area would have well court martial, court martial, and court martialed. So yeah. And Azumi was asked to be brought back. Her simply saying no, and she's done killing people for the government. And what goes rogue? Izumi, for the next passing three years, would have become a vigilante and made sure. And yeah, all of the point of, well, we cut to a 20 year old Izumi now looking like this. Wick going to a bar, drinking with a pissed off face because her informant, well, just got killed. And another, well, female with white hair does ask her. What just are white mad? And Izumi just stating that something happened at her work and she it pissed her off. And the well person asking her to in a slightly drunk state She's not drunk, it's just more like she's had a couple shots so you can tell that she's like Oh talk about it and throws her a cup of whiskey or a shot of whiskey. Them downing around an entire bottle of whiskey. To the point of where they wake up in the same bed together. Yeah. And. <sighs> sorry. Izumi would have waken up first. And start to get dressed. Now the female would have also. Proceed to get dressed. Or not. Or proceed to wake up. With a headache saying. Uh, where am I? And they would be actually at. Mm, her. Or the mask. Mm, what should I. Oh I got it. Them, her realizing where am I, or her saying her head saying where am I, realizing they're in her bed. And then she looks over to the green hair female putting on some jeans and a black long, a long shirt, which would have looked like this. And then, well, then putting on earrings with her saying, who are you? Izumi looking back saying, oh, proceeding to put her hand out saying I'm Izumi. And then she does in the bed. Well, she is going to just go beside her, and this female would have said, Miracle. Yeah, that's the ship. Eh, I don't care if you all don't like it. And, well, Izumi does say, did say that she has, she put her number on the table and does say that we should do this again. Now, Ryuki would have looked down at her body. Realizing there's no clothes on. Proceeds to blush and... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And... Izumi would have left, going back to her apartment. Several days to pass by. And, well... She finds another informant. And gets the actual information she was looking for. Her routine to use that information to take down a drug dealing that was going to sell well, weaponry to a, you could say, to a, arm, a arms dealers would sell a, these weapons to terrorists. Or, not terrorists, but more like villains. I'll just say they're selling guns to villains. Izumi proceeding to, well, let t take them out. Not killing them because she's tired of killing people, so, yeah. But merely just knocking them out or beating them up. Now, she would be wearing a type of armor that is pink, or that's a somewhat darker pink, so like a pinkish reddish, but stark, and a pink visor. With a sniper rifle and a pistol, with a blade on her back, like a back of, back of her hip. This armor would have been, well, this. This. This would have been her well, sued, and her code name in the military was Black Sheep, and well, she kept the name. And whenever someone hears a Black Sheep, it is well, they're kind of scared because not nah, everyone, they don't die, but she's well. Let's just say she barely keeps them alive, or not having them in the best conditions. Now, her knife, sniper, and pistol would be this would be her knife, 
and she would actually have two knives in this. I should explain that before. Now, she would have one on her, she would have them both on her back hip, kind of like diagonal to each other, like the both handles are opposite from each other, so she can like, from both her hands, go back and proceed them, put them out, like take them out like a dagger or something like that, putting it like on the, putting them face down with the blade, so yeah. Her snipe rifle would have been this. Now, in this, I couldn't find a pink snipe rifle, or all the ones I found were ugly, so, yeah. So this, just imagine it says a pink, a, this, well, this suit's color, the reddish color. And her pistol would have been this. It being, though, what it looks like in this picture, it set up the whole color scheme. It is a, and well, it is a Tyrant Tactical JW3 STI 2011 Combat Master John Corgega. I think I made a mistake with that name, but yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now, after that, Izumi would, well, proceed to put everything in duffel bags and ties up the people everyone that was in there that are now unconscious and dials 911 on one of the guy's phones. Her proceedings to say it's, well, the vigilante named Black Sheep and she has cleaned up a mess for you people. The people would have been, she called a police station, so 911. Then immediately she would have, you no, know, leave the call and gone off to back to her apartment. And when heroes to get there, Nezu has, well, this Nezu is one of the people in the case that is referred to Black Sheep. Because the mil military does want to Black Sheep back, or to debrief her, or at least to try to, go, try to get her back in the military. But it's a, like a like 11% chance she'll go back. And that's even, and that really depends on even what mission it is she's going on. So, yeah, it goes to her 11% to even lower depending on the mission so yeah now well Izumi would have gone back and to her apartment like I was saying before and Nezu was just asking police officers what happened and they would explain how they were called by the black sheep and yeah and well Nezu would have been smiling and well why would he be smiling saying might be thinking, well, Nezu, out of all the people, wants Black Sheep to go to UA, and the only thing is, she doesn't know what quirk she has, or if she even has a quirk. There has never been, well, they think she has a, oh, enhancement my quirk, kind of like a boost in strength and agility and her whole physical aspect, but that's merely theorizing. So, yeah. And, well, Izu Izumi would have gone back to get a call from this white female, Miriko. The white female, a.k.a. Miriko. I'll just refer to her as Miriko. With Miriko asking on the phone, asking if they can meet up, and she just wanted to get to know her a little more. Izumi per saying so a date. Miriko, looking, well, talking normally on the phone, but... Izumi knows how she's, how she, well, realizes that she's blushing on the back end of it. They're on audio call, not a FaceTime call, but still. Her saying, no, I just want to get to know you better. Just coffee in. Izumi remarks saying, oh, so it is really a date. And they would proceed to go two days later on a date. Izumi proceeds to say that she's ex-military. Mirko asking what does she, what or what branch of the military was she in? Izumi clutching her fist, stating that she doesn't want to talk about it. Miriko putting a hand on Izumi's hand, saying that it's, she won't say anything, it's fine. Izumi saying that, fine, if I tell you, you're not able to tell anyone else. Miriko saying that, is it classified or something? Izumi saying, it's not classified, but I'd rather keep my secrets. She proceeds to say that she is a, she is, well, her... Well, she was a experimental subject, then turned military asset, and the whole shebang. And Izumi, Mirko 
gets up and hugs Izumi, stating that no one should ever go through that. Izumi keeping a, st well, not a stern face, but more like a sad-looking face, saying thanks. With Mirko making it her job to make Izumi smile for the rest of the day, and she would do so. And later that day, they do more or less go back to the bedroom, and, well, yeah, but at Mirko's place, and Mirko does have her own apartment, so she's not, like, with family or anything like that. It would be very weird. And, well, they, oh, well, with them looking at each other, and Mirko asking her if she is actually going to, if this is just physical for her, like a physical relationship, friends with benefits. Izumi just saying she doesn't know, and she'll try to think about it when they two talk next, or tell her next time they talk. Mirko, well, understanding the answer, because she kind of just asks out of nowhere, does simply just say, alright, and I'll wait then. Proceeding to get a pose that only a female can do, with a, well, Izumi looking at the, well, obviously naked body of Mirko, and, well... Just scoff, just saying, you're trying to seduce me, aren't you? With Mirko saying, is it working? Izumi proceeding to say, no. And, well, proceeds to get change of what she was just wearing before. It being a... They want to... Oh, um... Um... Nicholas Marketos, shout out to you who just described to me. Yeah, you're welcome. I just... Not if that was rude, if you don't want to meet, but you in my channel, I'm sorry, but yeah, sorry. And yeah, and Izumi would obviously just as so explaining get up and go off to back to her apartment. Her for the rest of that day just well reads a book or just relaxes. Within a night, she goes out to do more vigilante work, just mainly that night, taking out thugs and just small little. And taking him out, taking out a small gang that was causing a well, a block, a little trouble, and yeah. Now one week would have passed with the well, with Mirko not talking to Izumi. They did text, but it's like Mirko realized that they're gonna talk to face to face about that whole situation, so it's just more or less talking regularly with each with each other. So yeah. And, well, when Izumi does on call one time with Mirko, she hears a knock, knock, knock on the door. Her saying she got to take the, or she has to go to the door and see who's there. Mirko understanding just says, all right, call me back later. And does hang up. Or, and Izumi does hang up. As well as Mirko and, well, yeah. Izumi looking down what she's wearing and proceeding just to have a sweater on. Or just having some, well, female underwear, you could say. Female well, undies and a bra on her. And a sweater. She would have put on some pants and go to the door. Her opening up just smelling a very disgusting smell. And a... And which would have been by a man that looks like he hasn't slept in him over a year. As well as a young white, you could say squirrel or rat. And she does look down and asking if, what are they doing? Or if they need something. And well, Aizawa is saying that we're pro heroes. And Izumi proceeds to always has a knife on her for no matter what the reason. As of training, it was in her, well, yeah. Why would she have a knife? Well, yeah, because, eh. And well, proceeds to... Go on top of. Mm, how should I, how should she do this? Proceeds to jump on Aizawa. Aizawa, trying to get him, and Izumi, proceeds to well, use her leg. Use her well, being on Aizawa, more or less well, makes him topple on himself, hitting his back on the ground. And a knife would come out of Izumi's hand, would have been in Izumi's hand. And pointing right at Aizawa's eye. Yeah. Now, 
Nezu would have just said that won't be necessary and we're not here to take you in. And she just says, okay. Putting the knife back into her hidden pocket that she has in every sweater, out of precautions. She has a small knife in every pocket for measures. Not every knife, she doesn't have, she usually just makes sure she always has a knife on her. Even if it's small, so yeah. She gets a, she well gets off of Aizawa with Aizawa panting for air. And does as you were, what the hell was that? Her saying, well, I am ex-military, you should have realized what I was going to do. I, Nezu just proceeding to say, sorry if we were, if we should have taken a different route. And Izumi just proceeding to say that, are you here to bring me back to the military? Principal Nezu. Nezu proceeding to say, so you know who I am? Izumi stating that, yes, I know who you are. You're very, looking at Nezu, easy to point out who you, who you are. And, well, Nezu does look at himself, realizing uh, he, anyone could probably realize that he's the t well, principal of UA, and yeah, if they only seen him once. So, him just saying, yeah, you're probably right, and he does ask them to come, or he does ask Iz Izumi if they can come in. Izumi's just saying, fine, and don't touch anything. When they get in, well, it, there is a side room stating, well, don't come in. Aizawa looking at Zumi saying, what's that? Her saying, well, it just says don't go in, so why would I say? And Nezu saying, it's weird Garrus, isn't it? Her just saying, yep. And Aizawa just says, why are you being so rude to me and being so respectful to him? And Izumi just says, because he's your, well, because you're basically, he's your boss and he's, and he's the boss, so I'm going to be respectful to him. Though you need to earn that respect for me. Erase her head, and he, and yeah, she knows their names, and or she knows their hero names, but not the full names of their, their actual names. So yeah. Now, well, Nezu would have just offered a deal. Now, would have just said, "I came here to make a deal with you," and that doesn't involve the military. When as well, is Zumi proceeding to say, "Oh, and what that might that be?" Him saying to go to my school. Her proceeding to ask about what about her gear if she does go. She does go with you guys. The mess saying that, well, she can have all her gear though. You do have to get licensed. You have them licensed and hold up. Oh, like, oh, you have to own this gun and yeah, basically like that. And have a license for guns and all that. A gun license, the, well, to be exact. And Izumi thinks about saying she'll talk, well, she'll call them later. With Nezu giving him her phone number, and uh, says to, well, does wish her a good day, and, well, yeah. And he does say that, I do hope you do accept, and goes off with a racer head. Now, when they get back, a curious midnight would have asked them how to go. Nez is saying, Aizawa got his, well, fell, got, well, got his ass whooped. And everyone looked at Aizawa. Aizawa is just thinking, his head just like, damn it. And they would ask what he mean. Him, let Nezu proceed to say the whole story. Any teacher that was there, flat out laughs. Not, um, it's not there, but, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and I saw it's like, I'm going to freaking kill her. If she accepts, I'm going to train her as much as I can. And they did ask, well, what was her correct saying? They no one knew. And, well, Izumi in that whole process also told her, told Nezu about her backstory. And, well, Nezu was quite shocked when then hearing that the government issue was whole, or that whole thing was taken care of. So, he explains that she is has no quirk, but she was experimented on, and her physical body was enhanced, genetically. And, yeah. And, well, everyone would have looked at Nezu, saying, she's what? And Nezu just chuckled, saying, she's quirkless. It's quite impressive how skillful she is, and, well, how easy, easily she can take on people with quirks. And, yeah. Now, well, with, um, 
one of the teachers, a random teacher, just says, so what do you think Alamite's going to say to this? And they all look at Nezu and ask them if he has told Alamite. Nezu look, and even Aizawa says, you're telling him, aren't you? You haven't told him yet. And Nezu just says, I was going to tell him after this. And everyone calling bullshit on that. And, yeah, now, we do skip back to Izumi after the old, what I was just explaining, and, yeah. And Izumi, well, calls back, well, Miracle and does explain what just happened, and Miracle's saying you should join. They might be able to spend more time together. And Izumi just says that I was actually going to join either way, and, yeah. And Miracle does ask if they can meet up again, and do get an answer for that question she did ask before. And they would meet up with, well, they meet up when at a nice restaurant. Izumi wearing a nice black dress, while Mirako, no offense to any female, wearing a female suit. So she's more or less like a tomboy, but yeah. And well, they would have had dinner with Izumi, saying that you're, well, aren't you, weren't you going to wear a dress or something? Miracle laughs and saying she wouldn't be caught dead in a dress, though you look very beautiful in it. Izumi would just start flirting and they would flirt back. And, well, they, them wondering, well, the question with them slightly being drunk after having several drinks after they went to a bar. Because they had dinner, then they went to a bar and... Well, Miracle did ask the question, and well, there was a silence for about five seconds. Well, then, well, a well, kiss coming to Miracle, a passionate one, and well, er, uh, well, kissing back, and Izumi breaking the kiss, just stating, "Is that a good answer for you?" Mirko just saying so we're dating or we're, in a, we're so we're a couple and doing her old personality of saying yay and they would proceed to go back home and uh, well just cuddle not doing anything appropriate just cuddling with yeah and now well Izumi would have woken up Earlier than Mirko, proceeding to call Nezu because our because Nezu was she's Nezu's always at work about eight and well, she woke up around seven so she waited an hour and well Izumi would have called well would have called what's his name Nezu and well, accepted his terms and Nezu just says all right I'll see you here and I will send over your uniform. In about two hours. And her saying that's fast. Him saying that it's a slow day. So might as well. And Izumi does understand. So yeah. And Izumi does get two hours later. With Miracle act while waking up. When hearing a door open. And well Izumi getting a. Taking a box out of the front. With Miracle asking what that is. Her saying the uniform. Her being impressed with Nezu saying that was fast. Her saying he said it was a slow day and he wanted to do something. And, well, Miracle realizing that Nezu gets bored sometimes and with being so smart, that kind of leaves him with a lot of spare time. So he got bored and, well, she just says, oh, all right. And, yeah. And, well, Izumi would have more or less have a section of clothing that she did, well, get from Aiza, or not Aiza, from Nezu, and, oops, sorry, sorry, one that, I just did that, um, and she would more or less get a nice, she would wear the upper female version of UA uniform with some, well, pants and a, some nice green, or a nice dark pinkish, sh black, or nice pinkish shoes. Basically being sneakers. With Miyako remarking, saying she looks very nice. Izumi just flowing back, saying, oh, really? Well, you were, well, really, you were very nice last night. And, yeah. Her blushing, saying, Sh shut up. And Izumi just chuckle and just said, sorry, babe. And, 
Yeah. Though with Izumi just saying if what she wants for breakfast. Her just saying whatever she would or whatever well Izumi would make. Izumi proceeds to make pancakes with bacon or makes pancakes, sausages, and eggs. And making enough for both of them. With Mirko digging in and saying that's really good. With a stuffed mouth. With a, well, just, well, Izumi having her hand on her face. Looking at Izumi, or looking at Mirako, just stating that don't eat with your mouth full. It's very rude, or it's very disgusting. Mirako gulping back her food saying sorry. It's just so, so good. With a chuckle coming from Izumi, and just says thanks. Yeah, and all that food was pre-marinated from a store, and she's like, should I tell her? Nah. So, yeah. And, well, more days would have passed by with, well, Izumi asking if she would like to move in with her, seeing Izumi has actually a bigger apartment than Mirako. Mirako just staying sure, and, well, the next passing days, they do move in together, using a moving truck that they, Mirako, Mirko did, or no, that Izumi did, well, pay for it. Mirko asking how is she, well, how does she pay for it? Izumi not telling her that she's a vigilante, just says, alright, I'm going to come clean with you. And, well, you hear a, what, what? Do you, like, work for some shady thing? Izumi saying, have you ever heard of the vigilante named Black Sheep? Her saying, yeah, my ba Nezu, the principal, always, like, well... Is always talking about her. And uh, says, wait, that's you. With Izumi saying, yeah, what else do you think why Nezu would have called me and offered me a spot? Now, she would have faced mom herself saying, I'm stupid. Izumi pushing to, well, put Miracle in a hug saying, it's fine, babe. And saying she's also slow sometimes. And yeah, to make her at least bay or her girlfriend feel a little more, not as, feel bad, and, yeah. She does ask if she can see the whole armor, and, yeah. Does ask if that's actually, well, money from the Fets. Her saying, yeah, it's money that they stole from poor people, or stole from people, and I'm just using it. Might as well use it for something good instead of, well, make, well using it for drugs and all that. With Mirko realizing she's using it with... Mirko asking if she does use it for, well, anything illegal. Or just saying she does really, just she really just anything. She mainly just buys ammo and stuff that from, she just uses, she literally just buys ammo. Her two guns were from the whole event from the past when she left the military, so, yeah. And she also states that she also uses it for, well, living supplies and, well, the rent and if her armor ever gets damaged, so, yeah. But she also says that she only barely takes any money from it, so the majority of the money that she, well, that usually is there, is taken away. So, Mirako accepting that answer, just saying, alright. And, yeah, now, two weeks would have passed, or one week would have passed by to the start of UA, because, well, Nezu offered her the spot about, well, in the kind of, like, ten-month period, and the week went by, and she accepted it, so, yeah. And that was a Sunday, so, yeah. So another week went by, and, well, Izumi would have, well, went, went off saying bye, and Mirko's just staying by, and, yeah. With, well, Izumi getting on a train and going off to UA. People skirmishing around, saying, hey, isn't that a UA uniform? With them asking if, well, she's, well, she's going to UA. Or is that just something fake? She just states, no, it's not fake, and she's in that here, of course. Because, really. So, yeah, I'm seeing it's pretty obvious. And they do ask her if, what class she's in. Her saying class 1A. She got offered, and she accepted. And they realize she got a recommendation, so, yeah. Them saying, oh, you must really have a big, well, have a, well, a very powerful quirk if you got a recommendation. Her lying is saying, yeah, I got a, I have a cool quirk. I have a strength enhancing quirk. So, yeah. They said, cool. And left her alone. Izumi gets to school and, well, goes to the first 
goes through the first day, or at least goes through the school, meeting up with Nezu, just saying hi, and Nezu also says hi and does wish her a good day. And, well, All Might would ask who she is, him explain the whole story with All Might saying, so you're letting a vigilante come to your school, him stating a former vigilante, she's now a hero in training, All Might. Him just saying that, alright, whatever, it's on you if she does something, so, I won't. So, yeah. And, all well, Nezu obviously knew this from the beginning, just says, alright, I understand. And, well, yeah. Now, Izumi would have head to the first class, seeing Aizawa in the sleeping bag, remarking, saying out loud, also being slightly, well, the last person there. So everyone's there, and just looking at Aizawa, saying, are you going to be there forever, I Be there forever, eraser head? Everyone looking over at the female saying eraser head. Him, well, well saying rrr, 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 in a grumbly tone, just saying no. And proceeding to get off. Everyone's saying, what the hell? Izumi looking over saying, don't you find that a little off seeing a person in a sleeping bag? No, I'm thinking it's, well, thinking someone it's, or thinking of, well, it is a, well, what should I say? Um, kind of weird, and yeah. But anyways, that's how it gets up, and the old saying, put these on. Izumi, so well, always sitting on before when he did the whole thing of shut up, and before Izumi gets to get one of those PE uniforms, a another eh, would have been a cheer saying, "Sir, we have in, we have orientation today," with a yeah, coming from well. Ochako. And Oizawa would have done the whole rant of, well, saying that life isn't fair. And Izumi just says, yeah, that's true. Everyone asking, what does she mean? And Izumi proceeding to say, should I tell them or should you? Him saying, it's your secret, I won't say anything. And Izumi proceeding to say, alright, sit down. Everyone doing so, and everyone was, well, well, being curious, saying, alright. To you, so you all know who I am, my name is Izuku. I don't have a last name. My mother can go to hell. For all as I care. With a, well, her saying that she is the vigilante known as Black Sheep. She was offered a spot to go to UA, and she, expe and she well, accepted it. And she does hope that they can all understand her situation. And also proceeds to say that she's ex-military, and yeah. Ida saying, wait, what do you mean you're ex-military? Isn't me saying she went rogue and, well, not wanting to be a part of the military anymore. Because she, because, well, she also explains that they would have forced her into a, some sort of part of the military, and yeah. Kirishima saying that's not manly or heroic. Izumi saying yes, but they aren't heroes, they're the government, so yeah. And well, they would have obviously get the story of, well, some of the story of Izumi just not hearing the whole backstory of how she got to the military, which was a question raised, but she brushed it off saying that doesn't concern all of you. And yeah, now, um, hmm. Izumi would have, well, gone off to the, well, Actually finished her old rant or exp explanation, finally getting a PE uniform and putting it on. With everyone, all the f well, with everyone else going up to and getting the uniforms. But when they get to the whole well change room, they see Izumi with several scars and lines, like several scars that look like lines around her body. Them asking what that is, or the girls ask what that is. Izumi just saying that she was experimented on when she was younger, and just says that don't ask. And well, Momo's just saying starting to hear that, and says that we won't ask. Izumi just saying thanks. Mina asking if well. Also, but Mina just asked if she's single. Izumi saying no, in a casual tone. Now a guess would come from everyone saying. Who, wait, who's the lucky guy? Her saying that it's she's a, she's, well, she's a lesbian. No offense to any people that are lesbian, just saying she what she is. And she does say that she's not saying what her girlfriend's name is.
with a all oh, coming from me that was just says all right whatever and yeah now in the test since she does not have a quirk i don't see her going it's too powerful in the test only doing the whole physical and well she would also explain that she has no Seeing, yeah, so anything that was the non like quirk usage, so let's just say she got first place in every single one, and yeah, and they assume we would proceed to well finish that day off, but getting the whole thing from instead of well, Ida and well, well, Ida and Ochako, she would have gone off with Mina and Momo. With another female being, well, by the train waiting for Izumi. That being re. Mm, Mirako. Her saying, hi babe. Now a. <gasps> Wait, your, your girlfriend's the number. Well, she was number, um, what was it? Number fit The fifth, or. The fifth ranking here, I think. I'll, I'll give her, like, she's down ten rankings since she is younger, so. Saying, Wait, you're the. You're the. You're the girlfriend of the number 15th pro hero. And Izumi in a well, smug looking face is saying, yep. And well, Mirka's in a pouty voice saying, alright, that's enough. And takes Izumi off to the train. And they would have a lovely day afterwards with them just spending time together. And yeah. Now, I do believe that's a good spot to leave it off. And I'll explain the next event in the whole next episode. So, yeah. Now, this will be, well, that'll be the end of this episode. So, I do hope y'all have a lovely day, a lovely life, and wear a mask.